What's going on, everyone? Philly Insider Podcast here. We've got a Phillies video. Nate's back doing some Woo. Philly stuff. Been a while. Um, I did repost. I posted some of the clips from our a. Uh, it was the season recap that we did a long time ago, and I forgot to yeah. post them, so I, I just started reposting those again. But um, you guys can go check those out. We did the bullpen, the rotation, and the lineups coming out soon, or might be out by the time you guys see this video. But yeah. Anyway, the World Series has concluded. And that means that free agency is here. So, yeah, we've got a few free agents, not a ton, but not little at the same time. So we've got a decent amount that we got to think about re-signing. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this is obviously a big offseason for the Phillies coming off of another collapse where, you know, we're going to see if they end up spending over the luxury tax again, which is unlikely or, like I said, unlikely. So the other option is yeah. they just do the same thing they do every year and, underperform so with that said yeah. speaking of which didn't invest anything at the deadline and look who did and look who won the world series so i'll leave it at that um mm -hmm. going on to these yeah. free agents so nate we've got quite a few so i want to start with the bullpen guys so first off yeah. i think the biggest name out of our, our free agents you know not including club options which we'll get to is archie bradley who was our big pickup last year via trade you know it seemed like midsummer he was starting to figure things out and then did not that did not sustain to the end of the season. And he no. quite frankly just did not have a good season this year. Like not what we expected. You have to start start thinking a lot of this is just the pitching coaches or the organization and the way they run things. Cause I mean, Archie's been really good his whole career pretty much. And it seems like every guy who comes in here just can't seem to get it right. And he didn't even have like a terrible year. It just wasn't, it was not what we were hoping for out of RG. So he blew quite a few games in some critical moments. And yeah, what do you think? Do you, what do you think of Archie and his season he had? Are you willing to bring him back? What are your thoughts? Um, just, just one thing before I begin. Um, I did have the opportunity to purchase game worn Archie Bradley pants. And I said, it's not worth it. I'm not doing it. Um, so <laughs> just a fun fact there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I'll say, I think Archie did fine up until the point where Ranger switched into the starting rotation and Archie took on that, um, that main relief pitcher or a uh, closer, you know, role, that ninth inning guy. Um, and before he was solid, you know, he was an eighth inning, maybe ninth inning here and there, but um, I liked him then. And then, like you said, he just kind of had a, a collapse and I really don't know what it is because I want to say it's our pitching staff, but you know, he was doing fine at the first half and I don't know what, you know, it, 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 I guess maybe it's just the combination of the staff, the atmosphere of the Phillies, uh, Girardi's horrible rotations and, and calling people in the bullpen, um, which I don't want to, I'm not going to get into that. That's not this rant. You know, we already, we already talked about that, but um, I, I personally do not think we will resign him. However, as much as I dislike Archie Bradley for stealing our name and our, uh, our Why not friends, us? Why not us? Right, video. And then, yeah, tweeted it out. Yeah. Didn't give us any didn't credit. Tag us. Mm -mm. And then also, like the, I, I us put over. the link. I replied to him with the link on yeah. Twitter, and he liked it. Didn't give us credit. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So we're sour to Archie, but I I think um I think Archie can be a really solid uh, uh part of our bullpen if he's not the go to guy in the end zone or not end zone in the <laughs> in the end of the innings in the game. Yeah. I I think it's similar to like uh wide receiver one and two when there's a, a, a big star wide receiver one the, the the second wide receiver really benefits off of it um and then when he gets put on his own it, it you see a setback sort of some some people can definitely push through but archie couldn't do that so i think if archie isn't the go-to guy he he could be a 3.5 to 4 era type pitcher which i mean that's not great but for our for our bullpen that's about is all we're gonna get so I don't think we're going to keep him, but I think if we do get a bigger name in free agency or trade, he, he would be, I, I'd still, I'd still want him back. Yeah. I think they're going to try to retain him just because I think he's a good locker room presence. And I think mm. he's, he has a yeah. proven track record, but I mean, the bullpen is the one thing, you know, on the free agent market, you can kind of scavenge around, scavenge around and find good arms in there. Like it's, it's never, that's never really a weak market. So um, I could see them moving on from him. Just with the state of our bullpen, I mean, I know he blew some games. I would prefer to bring him back. Um, my gut feeling, I think they will bring him back. Um, you know, we'll see what happens, but I'm going to say stay for now. Um, now going on to a couple other guys. So um, 
Ian Kennedy, who we traded for midseason. I'm just going to get mine out of the way. Look, the dude's yeah. like 38 years old. Um, really, really struggled in the ninth inning with us. I mean, it just seemed like once, once he was on, you know, he closed for the Royals and the Rangers. Once he was on a contending team like the Phillies, when we actually like had a chance to make the playoffs. And I know some of you will laugh contending, but you know, we were in that race the whole season and we were in first at one point, it just seemed like the pressure was a little too much for him. And um, you know, I, I, I think you can find a younger arm who can probably give you the same, same production he did if, if you want to call it production. So, yeah. um, you know, he had a couple good, good moments with us, but I, I'm going to say he goes, I, I don't think he's going to be back. Yeah. I, I'm there with you. I think he's going, um, I mean, we picked him up just uh, as icing on. All right, I don't know who we picked up on icing on the cake, whether it was him or Kyle Gibson. But I mean, Kyle Gibson has has played his worth, and Ian Kennedy certainly hasn't. We only have him for a year. We only picked up his you know end of the year contract, so I don't think we have any plans on re-signing him. Um, and I hope that we can find someone else. Maybe, hey, maybe Sir Anthony comes back one of these days. Who knows? He disappeared like Andrew Luck a, a while ago, and and nobody knows what's happening with him. But um, yeah, Ian Kennedy's walking. Um, he's old he's showing that he's definitely on the decline and it's just not something we can afford when we're in tight, tight races for the playoffs. Yeah. I was doing a live stream the other day and we started talking about Phillies with some of our subs. And one of them was saying, um, one of them was saying they're definitely going to use Sir Anthony coming back as an, as an excuse not to bolster the bullpen. I was like, that's yeah, so that's accurate. So true. Oh my God. <laughs> so we need to re-injure Sir that. Anthony guys. We need to re-injure <laughs> Sir Anthony. Keep him injured. That's so that's, true. That's going to happen. That's literally what's oh. going to happen. Um, but oh, going on that. to the next guy, a guy who I think kind of found his groove at the end of the year in a new role, um, Hector Neris. When he wasn't closing out games, I thought he'd, look pretty good nate what do you think about hector do you think he, any do you think he's going to come back or no despite ruining what a great game we went to earlier this year when Kutch <laughs> had his pinch hit grand slam, grand slam despite throwing that game away down the drain there were a lot of people that threw that game away but he yeah. was the main one we went we went down to behind home plate and watched watch the him blow that game. And, yeah and we were so mad we left our popcorn there uh yeah that's that, true we were so pissed off. popcorn yeah, Hector, you owe us some popcorn, all right? That's a great deal, by the way. If you're ever at the bank, bottomless popcorn, solid deal. Um, Better than waiting in line for, like, the $20 chicken peeds. Yeah, yeah, facts. Um, <laughs> but Hector, I think he's staying. He, like you said, he really adapted his new role, um, and I, I think he did great. There was there was a few moments where he, he kind of, you know, uh, blew, had his old Hector nearest ways, but it wasn't, like, every every time he came in he he it wasn't where oh Hector's in there goes the game you know or something like that he 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 got me he gave me hope and it's the hope that kills you but I think Hector's gonna uh, continue to do well in this role um I'd like to see him re-signed I never thought I'd say those words but I'd like to see us keep Hector (laughs) nearest yeah I think so as well I think you keep Hector and I know a lot of the fans who look there's gonna be fans who say oh he blew so many he always blows the games blah blah I'm like Look, we understand that. But again, I think in his new yeah. role where he should have been, he was good in that role early in his career too. When he's not the closer, he tends to pitch very well. Um, I mean, end of the year, I thought he was really solid. So mm-hmm. I think he's been a, he's been with the Phillies for so long. I mean, he's just kind of one of those guys who, he, you know, the organization knows him. He knows the organization well. And I think they're going to be able to come to terms in an agreement. And, and I think he wants to stay here too. I think Hector likes it here. And I think he's going to, I think he's going to come back. He, he looked like he had, a new fire in him too when he would go out there and close yeah, out not I, close I, out I, games, but pitch a pitch a good ending. Yeah, he looked very fired up. Mm-hmm. So last yeah. pitcher slash like bullpen kind of bullpen slash starting rotation guy. Mm-hmm. Um he's not coming back. Matt Moore, I'm sorry. He, there's no way he comes back in the scene. And if he does, Dave Dombrowski yeah. should be fired instantly. Um him or Chase Anderson, if they're ever back in Philly's uniform, I will stop <laughs> hey, watching. Chase Anderson games, had like one so. good game against us. I think. I oh, know he did. Probably. No, he had a bad game. It was bad again. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So Matty Mo. See you later, Bo. I mean, it was a cool experiment bringing him after going over to Japan for a year, but yeah, you shouldn't be relying on guys like that to be in your rotation. So see ya. Yeah, no, I was hopeful seeing him in preseason and then, you know, the, the collapse, I sure hope this doesn't turn into a Nick Pavetta, Vince Velasquez type, but the thing is he doesn't have much like roots here. So I don't really think anybody's yeah. going to want to hold on to him. Um, seems like a nice guy, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's gotta go, you know, he's just, yeah. his, his career's behind Maybe he goes back to Japan, make some money. Absolutely. Know, yeah. Not, not here on the Phillies. No, absolutely not. 
All right. So actually, as we started this podcast, so the, there were two club options, both in the outfield, McCutcheon and Herrera. And while we were recording this, the Phillies made decisions on both of those options. So, Nate, you haven't heard this yet. So starting no. off with, with so you don't know. So starting off with Odubel, I'll I'll hold the suspense for you with Kutch till the end. Oh, you don't know no. yet, do you? I don't you don't know what know. they did. Okay, so Odubel, they declined his option, which I mean, look, Odubel's a good placeholder in center field, but I want to see some young guys play, and I think they can absolutely get an upgrade from him. Now, if they want to bring him back as like a bench guy or like, you know, kind of a safety option, safety blanket, maybe they do that. You know, just because they declined his club's option doesn't mean they work out. They don't work out like a short term deal. But I, you know, I, I don't I don't know if we do will be back or not. I think we're going to definitely find an upgrade in center field. Now for Kutch. <laughs> We have declined his options. So no. um, right now, Andrew McCutcheon is a free agent. Um, he will join Odubo Herrera oh. there. And and again, we could re-sign him, but I think they're also going to try to extend him. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Andrew, uh, Nate's a big Andrew McCutcheon fan. Um, so <laughs> no, it seems like his dude. time in Philly has come to a close. So yeah, Nate, Dang. what do you think on those two guys, how their seasons went, how they're, you know, I guess more so for Kutch, how his Phillies career went. Um, and how much you'll miss them. And if there's any chance of them bringing either of them back or like what you kind of expect, like their market to be in free agency, I guess. Yeah. I'll start with dubes. Uh, <laughs> he, he surprised a lot of people in the spring training and then fighting for the starting center field position. And um, you know, he put in a lot of hard work and uh, he started off really hot. I think it was two or three months. He was just on fire. The dude was playing lights out. Um, one of our best bats. Um, and then he kind of cooled off and then, you know, it was in between mild such and such. So, um, I was a little, I, I think dubes between the two of them is more likely to come back. Like you said, just as a, a placeholder stuff like that, because, um, you know, he, he won't be expensive and he's still relatively yeah. young. Um, yeah. but Kutch, Yeah. Um, I've been, I've been a fan of Kutch's since his days in Pittsburgh, uh, his rookie year, excuse me. Um, and yeah, uh, that's, that sucks. I mean, as, as much as I love him, he's getting old. Um, I, I wish we would keep him just for like the locker room presence, the mentoring that he has the occasional pinch hit grand slam, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid he'll ask for too much money. Um, that also means I have to get a Jersey now, another Jersey. Cause I only have Kutch jerseys. Um, means Nate's going to ban in Phillies now too. Yeah. Guys, wherever <laughs> Kutch is going, I'm, I'm the new fan. Forget it's that. like LeBron. Um, <laughs> I'm now I'm now one for four uh, uh, Philly team. He's no, a question um, sexual. <laughs> the yeah, it's I mean, but between the two of them, Andrew McCutcheon is just goaded, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it stinks. I would have always loved to see Andrew McCutcheon get a ring, especially on the Phillies. That would have just been a dream come true. Yeah. Um, I don't know much. I think there will be teams that will sign both of them um, because they still yeah. have a bunch of. Uh, assets Kutch for for a time was our home run hitter um leader for a good portion of the season so he still puts up numbers um i think what this means to the phillies organization though is that they're ready to you know start young i don't i i don't know if that means in free agency please for the love sign byron bucks and trade him i don't care what it is you made that mistake earlier and you're gonna make the same mistake now you didn't sign starling Marte. he became the super or the stolen bases leader in the league and had one of the best batting averages. We didn't sign him either. Don't make that mistake. I get it. We have Janko and Adam Hazley, and I don't know who else we have, but they're not going to win us a World Series. So please address that in the in the free agency. That's all I'm going to say on that. I don't think our farm system is going to develop anybody really that good in the, uh, the yeah. Effort, except for maybe Matt Vierling. He impressed me. I'll give him that. Yeah, he was impressive. Um, yeah, I'll give him that. Look, I'll say this. Kutch's presence is going to be missed. Um, I still remember when I went to Milwaukee, my one buddy, he wasn't a Phillies fan, but I, I, I kept, he's, he's a loud guy. So I was like, we got to try to get Kutch's attention because we were sitting along left field and we we're like, uncle Larry, uncle Larry. <laughs> and I'm just going to miss uncle Larry, man. That, that yeah. alter ego, you know, come to think of it. Maybe that's why he didn't respond to us because he wasn't in his alter ego. He was in the middle of the game. It, was, it wasn't was, uncle Larry. It was, he was zoned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was zoned in. So, but mm. um, look, going to miss Kutch's personality and presence, but I think yeah. it is time to move on. And I think, you know, hopefully this is a step towards the Phillies just like blowing things up and starting fresh and, and not completely, yeah. but in some sense, because I think we need like a new era of Phillies baseball and a new core around Bryce. 
Um, yeah. And yeah, as for a double, like I said, like I, you know, <laughs> through everything that's happened, he's out, he's ended up in a Phillies uniform every time he's been out on the field. So I won't be surprised yeah. if he's back in some fashion. Um, you know, so we'll see. Um, going on to a couple bench guys. Now. So we've covered, we've covered everyone. So we've got two bench guys. Oh, actually three, but one, I don't really count, which I'll, we'll, 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 we'll get that one over yeah. with. Matt Joyce isn't coming back. That's, that was, you know, I don't know why he was on the active yeah. roster ever. He was terrible. So he, he's, he's, he's well past his prime. If Matt, if he comes back and Kutch doesn't, I'm going to be pissed. Like what? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and he starts in left field next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He literally, oh my gosh. That, I would, I might switch teams if that happens. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, oh he, he can leave. He can leave. Yeah. So mm-hmm. with that said, there's two other guys. So I want to start with a guy who has pretty much had some of the biggest hits in Phillies baseball in like the past three, four, five years when he's been on the team. Um, man, this guy's been, you know, inconsistent, but he's a bench player. I and mean, then when he comes through, it couldn't be in a bigger moment. So Brad Miller yeah. is a free agent now. We've let him go before, but you know, I, I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like at this point with you know, I, I know he's frustrating to watch, but he, I think that's because his role was elevated to a point that it shouldn't have been last year. I think when he's yeah. in the proper role and he's more of just like a pinch hitter, like start every so often type of guy, um, he's not a bad utility piece to have. And again, he shouldn't be one of your primary bench bats or your, your, he shouldn't be your power bat off the bench, yeah. your power left handed yeah. hitter. But I do think he provides value, and I think he's a guy who can, you know, he play multiple positions, maybe not well, but he can go around wherever you need him to. Yeah. Um, and, again, like I said, he's built for the big moment. So um, I'm not really sure. I'll, I'll answer after you, Nate. What do you think about Brad Miller, what he did this season, what he's done in his close career, and do you think he's back this year? Um, yeah. So fun fact, I went to that game where he hit the uh, in the doubleheader um, but I left uh, the inning before that happened. So you're welcome, it's everybody. For that. Yeah, there was a tornado on I-95 um, up north where, where I'm at. Um, so we wanted to leave early. But um, if those who don't know, I have a very bad winning or losing record. I actually had a, like an 0-13 record until um, Roy Halladay Day uh, broke the curse. But um, yeah, Bamboo Brad, he's a nice dude. Uh, Hunter and I both met him. Um, yeah, he seems like a funny guy. Um you know, he, he's very inconsistent, but I think a lot of people, it, it's, I don't know what it is with Philly fans, but we, we see someone that shouldn't have our hope and our, and our trust in, but we put it in that player. Anyway, we do it with Toby. We do it with, you know, Ben and all these people. And, and, um, and like Brad shouldn't have had anybody's hope and trust in this season because the dude is not a consistent starter. He's not a consistent hitter. He's not even a consistent fielder. There were plenty of first base errors and I'm not blaming Brad oh. because he's not a first baseman or an outfielder or just a fielder in general, because he had errors at almost every position. But, um, but I still would like to see him back on the team. He's going to be relatively cheap. He come like you said, he comes in clutch yeah. when he, when he, um, when, when he wants to really, that's kind of what it is. There's no pattern, Yeah. but um, when he is clutch, it's, it's so important. I, if we would have made the playoffs that, game right there would i think is one of the things that would have started because it started that what seven game stretch where we we w- scored like yeah. seven runs yeah so i think it would be nice to keep bamboo brad um obviously if the price is right which really is the end of the day but right. i would like to see him back he somehow always whittles his way back onto our roster um and uh, i think he'll do it again so i'm saying stay for bamboo brad yeah i'll say stay as well i think that you know when you have a guy who can just especially in baseball season look you have got to yeah. ride the highs and lows throughout a 162 game season. And a guy like that who can kind of spark, spark a fire and spark some momentum on your team. I think that's something that, you know, you have to value, you know, I, I, again, I understand the inconsistencies, but I do think that's something that you don't get in many bench players like himself. So I think that they should bring him back again. I don't think he should be, I think he should be at the back of the bench. I don't think he should be one of our primary guys there, but um, I would like to see him back in a Phillies uniform. Yeah. And the last guy we have here was a midseason pickup, our only position player we picked up. I wish we would have, you know, gotten some more offensive upgrade, but, um, you know, maybe like a Jorge Soler or a Jock Peterson or an Eddie Rosario or an Adam Duvall. You know, um, I I feel like if one team had picked those guys, all those guys up, um, they would have gone very far this year. So, yeah. (laughs) um, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, I'm referencing the Braves for those you don't mention. No, don't don't catch up. They might have. they, they might have gotten all those guys, and and 
they might have gotten more at the deadline. But again, anyway, <laughs> um, so we did. We acquired Freddie Galvis back at the deadline. He's outside of like being a journeyman the past couple of years. He was a Philly for a long time early in his career. Um, yeah, look, he can play the left side of the infield. I'm sure he could play second base if you need him to. He's a good utility guy. Um, you can have, I think he can start a little bit more often than Brad. I think he's got a little bit better of a bat. Definitely was nursing an injury. He wasn't the same on defense. I don't think he is the same on defense, but I think that's something you got to value. And yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think Freddie, I think well, I thought Fred, Freddie hit pretty well for the most part during the back end of his season. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I love Freddie and he's been here for, you know, with a Philly for a while, but I don't know if they bring him back. I feel like there's other guys who can you have to fill that role. Um, you know, I, I, I'll say this. I'm not sure if Roto is going to be back in that the same role he had. I just think, you know, I think we kind of caught fire again, another guy we put hope and we probably shouldn't have, but um, I think he just kind of, he just kind of had some big moments. I don't know if that's sustainable, but Freddie, I mean, you kind of know what he is. So I could see him being brought back just for like, you know, just because again, like I said, you know what he is and um, you know what you're going to get out of him day in and day out. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, if I had to guess, I'd probably say go. I don't think he's going to be back, but I could very easily see him being brought back for a cheap deal. So what do you think, Nate? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the shortstop and third base position are two big question marks in our, um, in our, you know, team. But, yeah. Um, I, I'm hoping that we address that in free agency and sign some, some big names. You know, that's the optimist in me. I know in reality, we're going to sign like um, Adrian Beltre out of retirement, you know, and he's going to bat like 200, you know, like we're not going to sign many people that are going to impact or help us go to the world series. So I don't think Freddie's going to stick around because we still have DD um, and DD right now isn't even listed as our shortstop starter. I don't think, well, then again, we're far away away from the, from the season, but I think he's not, um, a bona fide starter for shortstop. So I don't think Freddie will be staying around. It was a fun little stint he had. It would have been even better if we made the playoffs. Um, yeah. He's a fun dude, but um, yeah, I'm going to say go for Freddie Galvis as well. Well, that pretty much wraps yeah. up all our, our yeah. free agents. So I guess we can finish up with, well, you kind of hinted at it just now, but like top yeah. positions you're looking at for us to, mm-hmm. um, to us to target in free agency. And I'll go first right. in this one. Mm-hmm. obviously bullpen. I mean, that's pri- probably priority number one. Yeah. Um, shortstop, like you said, absolutely. I mean, Didi is just, to me, is just not the answer at all. Um, and he's not getting any younger. So, you know, let him go to another team and do amazing since we let him go, of course. But um, it's not going to happen with us. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, third base, honestly, I think my, probably not right behind shortstop in terms of needs and center field is probably in front of it. But I think third base is something you got to look at depending on mm-hmm how kind of Bryson Stott, wherever Bryson Stott and Gene Segura kind of end up fitting in the defense. I mean, where, wherever the third spot is, I think um, on the infield will kind of be something to target. But I think, I think Boehm, Boehm, I think is going to move to left field this year. I, I do. Uh, and I think that third base could be a need because of that, but Bryson could also play there. Gene could play there or, you know, whatever's going to happen with them. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, center field, I said it like center fields absolutely got to be something we look at, you know, Adubel's not back. So, that means that there's going to be open competition for, you know, guys like Moniac and Hazley and, you know, Janko, I think is definitely a, a minor league deal. I think, you, I don't think you, yeah. Yeah. I think people, I remember I told people at the deadline, I'm like, we should definitely look into getting Starling Marte. And we, you, you and me yeah, both we, did. We, yeah. And I remember I got comments back at me saying, well, Janko's hitting 350 right now. Why would we trade for a center oh, fielder? And I was like, gosh. that's not sustainable. And then of course, you yeah. know, with more playing time, yeah. you know, I look, I love Janko too. I think he's a great guy, but Polish of Prince. course, more, yeah, yeah, for real. Um, of course, with more playing time, he, you know, he gets exposed because he's not a starting player. He's a bench player. Um, you know, people, I just, I just think our fans overreact a little bit too much stuff like that. So, you know, I, I think center field is absolutely something you got to look at outfield as a whole. And yeah, I mean, bench too. bench is going to be a big one. And I think you should add one more starter in the rotation too. So those are, those yeah. kind of was all over the place, but Nate, what do you think are some yeah. of our big needs heading in the off season and free agency? Uh- I'll address what I think our biggest needs are. And then I'm going to list what the Phillies are actually going to do. So like you said, <laughs> oh, no. um, a bona fide uh, closer, I think we need, um, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't think our, our bullpen outside of that ninth inning isn't terrible. It's not great. We have some guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of the runs they gave up were on bullpen day, which was one of the stupidest things ever. And then it was blowing the game in the ninth inning. There was very little 
blowage in the middle of the game, like seventh, eighth inning. Um, odd term there I used, but um, so I think the closer is the most important role. Um, and then I'd say center field. I don't think we're really going to be looking too much at left field because Veerling, uh, Maniac, oh boy, don't even get me started. He's too cool to get signatures uh, or to do signatures. Or did he do, no, he didn't do signatures. It was Veerling who did signatures in, in AAA at uh, Central Defender. Um, and then, like you said, shortstop and third base, I think we're going to go for one or the other. And then the, the other position is just going to be Phil or whatever, or, you know, a minor deal, but definitely mm-hmm. one of those two. Now what the Phillies are going to do, we're going to sign a really expensive starter uh, <laughs> for, for no reason um, that ten, turns out to be a bust. We're going to sign like, I, I can't even think of someone horrible. Um, we're going to sign two to three C plus bullpen pitchers that come in with like a 3.5 to four ERA and they leave with like a 5.5 ERA. You know, we do that every year, whether it's, um, you know, Ian Kennedy or uh, who do we have last year? David Hale, people like that. I forget who else we brought in. Um, yeah. A bunch of people. Henry, Brandon Workman. Workman. Yeah. <laughs> the I list Workman. goes on. We were, <laughs> yeah. It, it's every year we sign two to three or one or two bullpen guys that just get worse when they come on our team. I think we're going to look at um, a third baseman or shortstop, but nothing crazy. And then we'll sign an outfielder. Um, but like, like Hunter and I talked about a while back, check it out. We wanted Buxton. We wanted Starling Marte. Both of those would have been great finds. I'd love to find someone like that or them in trade slash free agency. I'm not too familiar with what their contracts are. I think Buxton's out of Minnesota. Um, I think his contract's done soon, soon. soon. Might, might have one more year. I'll, I'll, and I'll then I'm not sure about Marte. Quick. I don't know what he, um, was he's on the A's, right? Marte is a free yeah. agent. So we could definitely go okay. after him. I would love to see Marte come here. Yeah. Um, and then as for Bo- Boxen, I think Boxen, I think has another year, but he okay. like, he okay. didn't get an ex- They didn't work out an extension yet. Or I don't, he does I don't not want to play there. I wouldn't blame him. You know, I, I, I'd love to play for the twins back when they had Joe Maurer and Justin Morneau, but not right now. Um, though I don't know what kind of – on a totally unrelated note, I don't know what happened to them. They were doing really good last year, and then they kind of just dipped. Yeah. Um, I think Crazy, it's Nelson man. Cruz. Wherever Nelson Cruz goes, good things follow. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I hope we can get a center fielder. I hope we can get a reliever. I'd like to see, like you said, another starting pitcher um, because it's bound that one of our starting pitchers is going to get injured. Mm-hmm. But if all of our starting pitchers are healthy, Eflin, Ranger, uh, Gibson, N- Nola, and – Wheeler, that's a solid starting rotation that we don't have yeah. to do the horrible bullpen days. And then our bullpen does better. And uh, yeah, so hopefully injuries don't kill us and we actually make some good calls on in the off season. Yeah. Well, that pretty much wraps it up guys. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate the support just past 600 subs. So we're on the way to one K we're, we're getting there um, hopefully soon. And yeah, thank you all for all the support. It's been tremendous. And we love doing these Phillies videos for you guys. So mm-hmm. like we said, like, you know, we were going to transition into kind of our football and basketball, but we're still going to crank out them Phillies videos for you guys in the off season. Yeah. And um, once opening day comes around, I'll have a hype video and we'll be oh, doing yeah. our, you know, regular like sections of the season where we were like do our Monday review. And then in the summer, we'll probably do it more often than Monday, but um, depending yeah. on time and all that. And I'm also working on putting together, uh, a compilation of like all the moments from the Phillies games that we went to this summer, um, which would be cool. cool. It should be like, yeah, a, it should we be like to, a we good went 15. to a bunch of them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, thank y'all for watching. Mm-hmm. Nate, anything you want to say before we wrap up? Um, ring the bell, run to be run, uh, fly Eagles fly. Um, hey, every, every you, I need you guys to beat the Chargers this week. All right. So <laughs> I, I want to see we will. that. We will. <laughs> awesome. Boston Scott's going to run all over that defense. So, <laughs> all right. Mm-hmm. Booby rock, fly, eagles fly. Guys. <laughs> See you guys later. Peace.